December 2023, a few days to Christmas, Arenas de Jose Ignacio, Uruguay. Around 5 a.m. in the morning, former PSG and Argentina star Ezekiel Lavesi was having a great time, surrounded by his family and friends. But now, the retired star forward is restless. He's sure someone has broken into his home. This is no time to second-guess oneself. He heard them loud and clear. In what now seems like a blur, Lavesi will get up from his bed, get into a fight with the intruder and successfully defend his family. In the heat of the moment, he didn't feel anything. But now that his adrenaline levels are back to normal, he is well aware that he's bleeding from his midsection. Then again, that's nothing compared to the sharp, twinging pain he's feeling around his neck. It's 7 a.m. in the morning now. Lavedzi's brother is outside, talking to the police personnel from Section 13 of Arenas de Jose Ignacio. After a quick assessment of the crime scene, the police come to the conclusion that, instead of them, a medical team is required on the spot because, as their findings show, there was no crime to speak of, no intruder, nor a life-threatening altercation. A team of paramedics responds to the police's call and take Lavezzi to Punta del Este, more specifically to Cantigril Sanatorium. In the following hours, the Argentinian will be all over the news, both in his home country and Uruguay. And in the next few days, the news of his latest and strangest injury to date will make it to all over the world. Some reports will suggest that this was just a basic household accident. Lavezzi, according to these reports, had just fallen down changing a light bulb. At 5 a.m. in the morning, though, other reports will imply a family feud, where members of the Lavezzi family got into a serious fight over a money matter. But the most intriguing and worrying reports will come a few weeks later, when Lavezzi is admitted to a center in Buenos Aires known for the treatment of psychological disorders. According to these latest reports, whatever happened in Uruguay was all in Ezequiel Lavezzi's head. What really happened on that dreadful day? Why were there multiple and conflicting reports about Lavezzi's health? Who was alongside him then, and who is now? And more importantly, is he really okay? Both physically and mentally, welcome back to Football Files. Today, we're taking a look at the latest and worrying news coming from Ezequiel Pocho Lavezzi. The corridors of the Cantagreal Sanatorium are buzzing with journalists, who are desperately trying to get an update. Ezekiel Lavesi has been admitted to the clinic in the early hours of the day, and his condition is a mystery for football media and fans around the world. For people who remember it or who were around to see it, it's like a calmer version of what happened 23 years ago, when Diego Armando Maradona was admitted to the very same establishment in a much worse condition than Lavezzi. The legendary Argentinian was saved by Jorge Romero, a young doctor who had graduated three weeks before the terrifying incident. Ezekiel Lavezzi, on the other hand, won't be needing such a dramatic intervention. And shortly after the director of the sanatorium, Maria del Carlo, Carmen Lorente answers journalists' questions. The concerns about Lavezzi's health will diminish in intensity. Yo lo que les puedo confirmar es que él se cayó, tuvo un traumatismo en un evento social y se fracturó la clavícula. Eso es lo que, por lo que está ingresado acá. Él se encuentra estable y ya fue, se le hicieron estudios, ya lo vio el traumatólogo y por ahora no es de sanción quirúrgica y está inmovilizado y va a quedar unas horas en observación acá en nuestro centro. Although Lorente's explanation cleared the water about Lavezzi's then medical condition, Questions about what really happened that led to his hospitalization were still at large. The story was ridden with contradictions. A family feud, a domestic accident, and a much more worrying psychiatric episode all remained a possibility. Act 1. An Urban Legend Twelve hours after he was admitted to the Cantigril Sanatorium, Ezequiel Lavezzi was discharged. The wound in his abdomen wasn't deep, and there was not much left to do about his fractured collarbone. He couldn't have been better physically, but his family knew what he needed more was mental and emotional support. That's why they wanted to bring him to Rosario as soon as possible, where he'd be in the care of his mother and son. The family's initial plan was to bring Lavezzi to Buenos Aires with a medical plane, and then take him to Rosario, but they couldn't arrange a flight with a medical plane. The very next day, on December 21st, Lavezzi was at Capitan de Corbera Carlos Curbelo International Airport to take a private plane to Argentina. 
According to the Lavezzi family's lawyer, Lucas Bertero, Ezekiel Lavezzi had a psychiatric attack on board. That's when he started shouting praises and requests to God. Lavezzi's physical health also deteriorated on board, and medical staff spent an hour reviving and stabilizing him. Although it was difficult, he was finally able to join his mother and son. The Argentinian was now in a stable condition, but the news about his mysterious night was getting more and more out of hand. El Observador, among other media outlets from Uruguay, suggested that the Argentinian was injured during a family feud that revolved around money. Around the same time, Lavezzi's former agent was being accused of bamboozling him in a fraud scheme that allegedly set back the player a whopping 25 million euros. Could someone from his very own family be a part of the said scheme? The response from the family couldn't be swifter. When Thai Sea Sport contacted the members of the Lavezzi family for an article they would publish the very next day, the story concerning Lavezzi changing a light bulb and falling on a piece of glass furniture resurfaced. Like a proper urban legend, the events that took place in the early hours of December 20th started to change over time. In one retelling, Lavezzi had stumbled when a family member tried to take a kitchen knife from his hands. In another, the former player had inflicted damage on himself using scissors. A few weeks later, just when everyone thought that strange story was finally over, a brand new chapter started, and this one was way more worrying than the ones that came before it. Act 2. A Mental Breakdown just 18 days after his mysterious injury and hospitalization in Uruguay, when his fans and the international football community were waiting for happier news coming from the Argentinian, things took a darker turn. On January 6, 2024, Ezequiel Lavesi was admitted to Dharma Psychiatric Center in Buenos Aires. An article published on La Nación the same day Lavesi was admitted to Dharma suggested that the player was rushed into the clinic after an overdose. The family was once again quick to react, and this time it was Lavezzi's son Thomas who took to Instagram to give an update on his father. My dad is fine and is undergoing treatment. Stop inventing things that are not true. He doesn't have any overdose or anything they say. This visceral reaction didn't have the desired effect on the narrative, and for another week, Lavezzi was seen as this out-of-touch maverick. He was known to enjoy night outs and a few drinks back in his playing days, so the story, at least for people who wanted to believe, checked out. It took another week and an unexpected confidant to set things right. On January 11th, Mauricio D'Alessandro, one of Ezequiel Lavezzi's lawyers, was contacted for a news update on the player, and it was only then the world got to know what was at stake. A very concerned D'Alessandro explained the situation in depth. In the middle of the night, he heard a noise and thought there were people in the house. That's how the incident happened. When he left the hospital, he tried to overcome the crisis alone, but he didn't succeed. That's why he went to this establishment. It's not a pathology that can be cured by just saying, don't go out dancing. It requires medical treatment. Act 3. The Treatment at the time of recording, Ezequiel Lavezzi is still under treatment for hypomania, a mental and behavioral disorder in which a person's mood changes abnormally for no apparent contextual reason. The Argentinian is expected to pass a medical at the end of January, and it will be up to him and his doctors to decide whether or not treatment at home would be the better option going forward. Although he's not a medical expert by any means, Lavezzi's lawyer, D'Alessandro, had described him as only a danger to himself. The fact that the former star accepted a 21-day treatment suggests that he'd be ready to prolong his stay at the clinic if it deemed necessary. Everyone in his entourage is counting the days to see Ezekiel Lavezzi back amongst them and in high spirits, and the feeling is mutual among the international football community. Two of his former sides, San Lorenzo and Napoli have already shown their support for Pocho. Former Albiceleste teammate, legendary defender, and Inter Milan's vice president Javier Zanetti has also voiced his concern and support for Lavezzi. In an interview on Channel 13 El Trece, Zanetti said, The mind is fundamental, more important than the body. Today, players have many more tools than we had. You have to help him. You don't have to leave him alone. All the people who are going through problems of this magnitude are certainly asking for help and we must give them a hand. Like every football fan, 
We at Oh My Goal also would like to extend our best wishes to Ezekiel Levesi and hope that the helping hand Zanetti talks about is near. With that being said, we're going to wrap up this episode. Before we leave, make sure to let us know your favorite Ezekiel Levesi moment. If you want more football files in your life right now, make sure to check out this episode where we talk in depth about another former PSG star and how he was saved from prison thanks to a secretly recorded video. As always, thanks for watching.